Good morning, Blue Ark Station. I know it's early, but just as a reminder, your stim ration will be cut to 75% of the norm today as we received a new version of our friends. We interrupt this scheduled broadcast for a breaking news update from the Sticky Buttons podcast. Alrighty, yo, 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 what is up, guys? This is Brandon. And, and this is Blake. And uh, we, we have another podcast episode coming at you guys. And um, it's coming real hot, man. I actually wanted to start this off. So you mentioned Breath of the Wild and you mentioned that mobile game on the prior episode. Um, and last night, I actually cracked open that game. I just couldn't help it. It was $2.99 uh, Florence. And oh, you I did, bro? Started playing it, and oh. it's just such a calm game. It's, um, you know, you, you start off, you brush your teeth, you basically follow this, this girl around her day, and um, it's a story, and the audio is so clean, the game is so crisp. Um, the only, only thing I have about the game so far is the size. Um, it was 2.56 gigabytes, and while gaming on mobile, you know, that that does take up some space but um that's it's, that's big it seems like you can play through it and um and you can delete it once like you've gotten your experience oh my you said it was 2.5 gigabytes yeah that ooh, that's rough for me it was 2.56 and it might vary based on the iphone you're on Dang. yeah it said on on my app store that it was 1.3 gigabytes and i currently have 0.8 gigabytes free so <laughs> <laughs> you're right on the cusp there i know yeah i actually i looked at looked through my storage today i i didn't didn't quite pull the trig because i don't have the space for it but i was just yeah. like looking through like i deleted everything in my recently deleted and that freed up 0.6 wow um, so everything that recently deleted <laughs> oh yes yeah. so i guess i have like um like under the suggestions on my iphone it said like if you delete all of your like recently or no, it was if you delete all your attachments on your messages, you'll free up like two gigabytes. Wow. And then I was like, man, that sounds like such a hassle. And then that's pretty like, gnarly. I kind of looked at my girlfriend. I was like, Hey babe, how many, how much uh, free storage do you have on your phone? <laughs> and she has like, I think close to like 80 free gigabytes. Wow. <laughs> she has I'm, tons of space. Yeah. I'm probably just going to do it on hers. <laughs> <laughs> and who knows she might just pull you know open the game sometime and enjoy it it honestly is a game that you can just open up and have a good time with that's what yeah, I so you just like start brushing your teeth is that pretty much all you've done then there's um there's chapters so you find oh. you kind of just follow her through her day so that's cool i mean i got up and that was the first thing i did when i played the game was brush my teeth and then after that i took the bus and like they're like little things the story and like when you talk to someone you kind of have to like make like message bubbles come together and it's just little things here and there but it's never explicitly told you like they, they never explicitly give you instructions instructions you kind of just have to like figure it that's out. cool i'm into that I, mean, I was gonna ask you a little bit about the game mechanics like so it kind of just throws you into it and you're kind it of just throws it. you into it yeah and that's, cool. and that's why i feel like it's you get into it because it's you just pick up things here and there and it's so like so smooth it runs so smooth I see why it won an award. Yeah, that's awesome. I can't wait to check it out, man. I'm, I'm jealous that you got into it before me. I really am. <laughs> I, could, I wasn't expecting it, man. I was, um, I was actually, funny enough, on Zoom with my girlfriend last night, and we were just talking about it. And I showed her the game, and she just really liked the colors of the app. And so I pressed it, and I started playing a bit for her. And then the rest was history. I started playing a bit. I just couldn't, couldn't put it down for like 20, 30 Oh wow! Man. Earlier today, I just picked it up again and just started playing some while I drove my little sister somewhere. Um, so it's just a great game. I recommend it. I'm really excited to to check it out and talk to you more in depth because, yeah, I mean, like that sounds super cool like, that you can get that from like a 2.99 mobile game. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's exciting. I'm excited to talk about that in the future. Man, I'm just like thinking about it now. Like it, it kind of just seems like a really chill vibe. Like, especially from, like, the colors of it and stuff. It definitely is just a really chill vibe. Um, but, yeah, I wanted to get into um, Breath of the Wild as well. It was a title that you were mentioning on the prior podcast, and it just brought up some memories. And I needed to, you know, bring it out 
start playing it again. You brought that out too? I brought that out too last night, just a late night session. And I, I see why I stopped playing, man. It's because I got stuck in that part. <laughs> it was, and I'm very tempted to just start over and kind of try and like pay more attention to the story. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I was thinking about maybe looking at a walkthrough, getting some pointers, just seeing where, like what to do, and then taking it from there. So how, how many hours have you put into it? So far, um, we've only put in about three, four hours into the gotcha. game. I'm gotcha. still stuck in that part where I'm exploring these shrines, trying to get these um, the tablets. Mm-hmm. So I can take that guy. Yeah, definitely. I, I wonder if I might be able to help you with that. Just like kind of like right off the bat. So I've probably put um, like 45 minutes into it. And I'm like halfway done with the, the four shrines. Oh, wow. So, but like I also like explored a ton too. So like when you wake up, you kind of like come out of a coma. And then you're just like, what the heck is going on? Like I said, you're in your boxers, which I <laughs> thought was hilarious. And then you yeah. kind of make your way um, out of this cave. And it's just like the like most like beautiful like cutscene of like it showing you the whole world and like kind of like the, oh yeah like this is cool like I get it like you're flexing like this is cool that it just looks like this um, and then you kind of just make your way and you talk to an old man and I tried to like exhaust like all my dialogue options with this old man um, and I thought that was funny I actually like <laughs> when I realized that it was like something special is like I tried to like. I like bumped in. I was like trying to pick up an apple on like the other side of a tree and I accidentally started climbing the tree. I was like, what? Like you can do that. And then I pretty quickly learned that you can climb anything as long as you have like the stamina for it. Um, And then, Oh gosh, I'm forgetting what happens immediately. Um, But I think like, okay, I remember you like have to find a tower. I kind of like stumbled across or I stumbled upon this tower. And I was like, man, I don't really know if I want to check this out right now, but I like put my Sheikah tablet in it. And then it like went to this like whole cutscene and like this huge like tower came Just up out of the ground. Have you, the ground. have you have yeah. you seen that? I've seen those. So I think I must have got lucky because I literally stumbled across that that pretty early. And then like I also figured out like the combat. And I was pretty I'm pretty um like I said in the last one, I'm I'm not loving the fact that your weapons just break. And like I don't really, like, at the, at the moment, I don't really get anything out of it, because, like, when you switch to another weapon, like, like it's not like you're not in danger anymore, because, like, if you hit the button to, like, select a new weapon, like, it, like, pauses the game, kind of yeah. like in, uh, like, Ratchet and Clank, when you, like, press triangle, and, like, the weapons, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah so, it's kind of like that, but it's, instead of, like, being a circle, it's, like, a linear, yeah. a linear line, and then... Um, like I said, I'm not too far into it, but I don't really get that mechanic. And I know that right. people people like that mechanic, but I guess that I just haven't gotten to a point where I'm like, I understand why they did that. R- regardless, um, so then once you get to the top of the tower, like you like do some cutscenes with the old man, and he's basically like, um, see that thing over there? Like that's a shrine. Like go get me um, the treasure that's inside. And then after doing it, you get like you like beat the or beat the shrine. You beat the challenge, and it's like this like skeleton of a monk. And they're, they just like pass you this thing called a spirit orb. But there's also like the first time I did, it, I was like, holy shit, this is cool. Cause it's like the skeleton. It's like, I've been waiting for you, the chosen one. You completed the shrine, like take the spirit orb. And then I was kind of like, so like the reason that the old man wants you to like find the treasure is cause you need a glider. And he's like, oh, I just happen to have a glider. Like go get me the treasure in there right. and I'll give you the glider. And then you complete the one. You have the, you get the spirit orb. As I was coming out of it, I was like, oh man, this old man's going to be disappointed. Cause I feel like this spirit orb is something that I can't give. Cause like, I just aren't like, it's something that's earned that like I can't give it to you. Um, but then like, that's just like what I was thinking in my head. And then the old man was like, Oh, like you got a spirit orb. And I was like, when, how do you know this? Like, who are you? Like, <laughs> I, I'm this, I just want to know who this old man is. And then he basically said like, Oh, there's four more in this land. Like you or four more in the great plateau, which is like where you're at. He's like, you need to go find those spirit orbs and give them to me. And he's like, well, it's like supply and demand. The price just went up. And I, was just, I thought that was kind of silly. But then I like went to the top of the tower and I like climbed up there. And he was, and like, so also like in the cutscene where he's like explaining there's four more, he's like any of these towers you can just like cut to, like you can like fast travel to, yeah. them, which I forgot how to do. That's really helpful. Do you remember how to do that? That's the part I got up to. And like, I would fast travel and just getting past the the cold shrine is is a challenge because you need to bring up like fire pits you need to bring up some food you just need to prepare a lot for it oh i think that's the one that i'm going to right now 
You told me on the last podcast episode that you had died on an adventure up that you were just exploring in the cold and you weren't aware of that functionality, so you kind of got caught. Yeah, I kind of, I'm also, this is something that I can, I can foresee being a problem for me. So I'm, I'm colorblind and normally. Which like, one? It, it really, like, you know, there's like the three settings. It, yeah. it depends on the game. Okay. I'll have to, I'll have to look. I don't really remember. I normally try them each out because like, it's still like, in my opinion, this like colorblind mode, they're still kind of in their infancy. And like, sometimes like one works better for me than the other. Right. Um, I couldn't see my hearts because it's like red and black mm. and for some reason like i don't know like because it's like in the top corner maybe it was like the yeah. scenery that was in the background i just like couldn't see where my health was at maybe i just like have to like look at it a little more closely but i just like in the moment i was like trying to get down and i ended up like dying i was like well that kind of stinks but um, then i actually did some more exploring and i found the old man's hut and i like read his journal and it was basically like oh like if you bring me the ingredients for something i'll tell you how to make the spicy soup that will keep you warm <laughs> but he's like i don't remember the ingredients so yeah that's kind of that's kind of where i'm at right now oh but also like the old man like when i was like i forgot that he said that you could fast travel so i walked up there and like by the time i walked up there he was like already there and he was, <laughs> i was like well how did you beat me here and he's like do you remember that i told you you could fast travel yeah <laughs> and I was hey. like, that's, that's funny yeah i think that like actually the inside of the shrines are pretty cool I'm enjoying that. Like, it's just not really a challenge. Like if you're, well, at least at the moment, like the first two, I didn't really think were very challenging, but I thought it was like cool. And they introduced like cool things. That is pretty cool. And I, I like the, I like the shrines because they kind of like teach you. I feel like that's why they put the shrines in there is to teach you about the different um, like abilities that you have, like the magnesis, the bomb, like yeah. just those. I feel like they yeah. want to teach you about those functionalities. You know what I wonder? I wonder if it matters which order you do them in. Because like I think I also have mag the magnesis and the bomb. But have you used the bomb on any enemies? Yeah, I've used the bomb on some goblins, just throwing it at them and <laughs> trying to figure out how that works. Um, yeah, I had um, I used some on like the skeleton guys. We just threw some at them, and they these guys are goofy. But yeah, did you end up remembering what those like bell things with legs are? Do you remember what those are called? The bell things with legs. I'm not, it's not ringing any bells right now. The, uh, this like, here, I'll show you the, the sticker on my switch. Like those things. No, I've actually, I haven't seen that yet. And that looks like a boss you fight. Yeah. So these things, they're just like in the ground. I, oh gosh, I tried to take one of them out and I even tried to use the bombs too. And I couldn't like, it like wasn't doing very it's much. Too strong. Yeah. So I was just like, I kind of like, I was like, I have to kill this thing. And then I was like, actually I have a stick. Um, I probably, probably shouldn't be going up against this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which yeah, I, I mean, think that one. yeah, I'm I'm kind of starting to wonder if like that's kind of like the game that they're setting up to where like everything like is open to you, but you have to like kind of pick and choose like if you're and like if you're not ready for it, then you're gonna get fucked up. I think I think that's kind of the groundwork that they're laying, but I don't know. At the same time, like I don't really know what to expect because I've never played a Zelda title before. I was gonna ask you that if you played one before. Well, um, I take that back. I actually I don't know what it was called, like which Zelda it was. You might know, but I got it for the Game Boy. You, I like I don't know if I like ate a acorn or something, but it like took me into like a miniature. Like, I was like a miniature version. Yeah. Of Link, and then I like had to like do stuff in like the underbrush of the forest as like a as like a miniature Link. Do you do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know that game, but I'm sure it's a Game Boy <laughs> title yeah i don't even the only link title that i've played prior to this one was all of the way back in the nintendo 64 um my uncle had a majora's mask title i remember being just a little kid and like looking through all of his nintendo 64 games and picking that one because it had this like translucent kind of sticker on it and like you oh, moved it and it was those like are cool. it those was are such cool. a cool like nintendo 64 cartridge they had like the mm -hmm. zelda and i just the colors attracted me i put it in i played it and i enjoyed it a lot i remember just not understanding half of it but just still moving you know playing it and um i have very faint memories of it but it's still it's still in there somewhere it's awesome so. man i actually i just remembered that i was i was lying and i have played another another zelda game <laughs> Which one? I have, have played the, it was like, I think it was the Twilight Princess, the one on the Wii. Mm, the Wii. That's the Wii one. Mm -hmm. That one's pretty popular. That one sold a lot. That one was cool because you got to like play as Shadow Link and you were just like a wolf mm. or a wolf. Wolf? W O L F. <laughs> 
but it was cool man he still had like the like the wolf had like the like the triangle tattoo like on his mane like it was cool it was awesome which i don't even know what that means so i guess i'm not that's a, like the, the high rule insignia the three yeah. triangles if you play super smash bros that's like the the symbol that every care every like fighter has a symbol that's mm-hmm. the symbol that's for like link or like if you play a Sheik or zelda um that's the symbol that they will show ganondorf even which is a villain gotcha. ganondorf yeah. I think I've I think I've heard of his name before. I think that he's the main villain of this game, isn't he? Yeah, he's like mm. one of the main villains. Who who's Sheik? So Sheik is um Zelda, the princess, but when she's ready to fight, she gets in like this ninja garment. And so she's like a ninja slash princess princess. Oh, when she becomes this ninja, she's called Sheik. That's badass. Is it like a like a like she just like changes clothes or is it like kind of like she a changes magical clothes. kind of thing or? and and she has some sick abilities man she's really really athletic and i love fighting as her on super smash bros because she's just so like swift and, and hard to keep up with and does damage dude i i actually i was thinking about this today again like i think i kind of mentioned in the last one that i'm really trying to like I th- i'm thinking about getting into like a fighting game yeah and i, th- I think i'm gonna get the super smash bros just so that we can play together. Yeah. And I think that's going to be super cool uh, if we, when we can do that. I'm also, I think that the reason that I might be like having this like itch is because of Tony Hawk. Really? Elaborate. I, yeah. So, okay. So I feel like in order to get into that, I got to, got to give you the whole spiel. So, so this was, this was a couple of weeks ago. Now I ended up picking up Tony Hawk pro skater. It's one plus two is what it's called. And it's like, it's another title that's like $49.99. And it, they did have like a a $59.99 one that had some like extra DLC and stuff. And I like looked and I was like, well, what, what would I actually be getting here? And it was kind of just like nostalgic outfits and like old school boards that were in the old games. And I was like, you know, I don't really have any nostalgia with the title. um, So I think I'm just going to get the $49.99 one. And I picked it up, not really knowing what to expect. And I just kind of, since I never really played one before, it like launches you into the, well, first off, the like, the load screen is like super, super sick. Yeah. When it comes like onto the loading screen, there's just like this skateboard that has like the coolest design on it. And it's just like the loading screen or it's like the, like while the game is loading, like that's what you see. And then- the next one is just like footage of tony hawk like doing a cool trick and then it's like it goes into like all the other skaters that are in the game and they're all like it it has like a like a 20 to 30 seconds of like them like doing a trick and it has like a couple of them where like they they mess up the trick and like throw the board or like a couple other things like it's cool i was like wow i'm like i'm really digging this vibe and then i started playing the game and like it launched into this tutorial and since I have never really like played this game before, it I was really like just having so much fun with the tutorial. Like as soon as it like told me like a new game mechanic, I was like, oh, I'm gonna mess around with this for like five ten minutes. So see what it's like. Like if I now that I've played it a couple hours, I could probably breeze through that tutorial in like twenty minutes. Yeah, that tutorial I spent probably like an hour hour fifteen minutes just going through it. I actually had to like put it down because I didn't I was like I gotta go to bed and I like picked it up the next day and finished the tutorial so like I had to do the tutorial in like two settings just because I was like wow this is so cool and then the reason that I like that I really like am really feeling it I think is because it's really digestible Mm. like they really have like so like once you like you open it up and you are like able to play it you get put in I think it's called the first one's called the hanger I think that's what it's called. It's like, so, so you're like skating in a hangar? Yeah, actually. Wow. Okay, let me, let me take it back. So I did a little bit of research on this. So it's Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 plus 2. Yeah. So basically what they did is they're, they're like remaking Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, and then they also have a third game, which is which one I haven't plus really, two. One, yeah, it's 1 plus 2. And then there's also like, tony hawk like downhill jam or something in it as yo well. are you serious that's yeah. um that's a game that i used to play on the ds it was a tony hawk game that i just i i love that game just because it was such a like i'm sorry continue Can no I, dude tell me no keep going keep going downhill jam was just one of those games from my childhood that i remember spending countless hours on and i just don't quite know why 
Like, I'm sure everyone has a game where they're just like, why did I play that so much? I don't even remember liking it like that, but I played it a lot. Mm -hmm. and, it, and that was, that was downhill jam for me. That's awesome, dude. You should, I actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that out now because I actually haven't had a reason to play the third game. So yeah, basically they like remastered these three Tony and like by quote unquote remastering, they also had like Tony Hawk and all the, the old school skaters that were in the original game. They had them come back and they redid like the body in the motion capture. With okay. Them. So they like, sick. as like old men. So like, if you like check them, like if you like play as them, like they, like you can tell they're like old, like, they look <laughs> like old men. And it's kind of funny. And then they also have like this whole new line of like younger skaters. Yeah. And I'll get, I'll get into that in a second. Oh man, it's just cool. It's so cool. So I guess like another thing that's cool about it is I guess that this is like canonically the 13th game in the like Tony Hawk series and it's Tony Hawk one plus two which is 12 but then there's the third well or maybe it's so it's either it's either that or it's like one plus two plus the third one that's in there and that's 13 or it's one plus two and it's like the 12th one chronically I don't really remember but <laughs> it's either like the 12th or 13th one chronically and it's it's cool because I guess like it's like kind of like honoring those games because like they like, and it's like not buggy. Like it just feels so good. Like getting in and like doing an, like an, I'm learn, starting to learn some of the tricks too, like an ollie and like a kickflip and like, uh, it's just like so cool. And it just feels so satisfying to like hit it. Cause there's also like the sound of you doing it, mm. which is so cool. And like, I think I mentioned this like a little bit when I was like, oh, I'm going to talk about this. It is like totally the sports game for me. Yeah. It's like a, like a sport that I like truly, like, I'm just like, I would never My. do that. And like the, just like the like ability to just like hop in the game and yeah. like just try it out is like just so cool. And it's like totally my vibe too. Like, I think I, we mentioned this and we might've mentioned this in like an earlier episode, but like I fucking love skiing and like yeah. that whole, like that, like just like hitting up the terrain park or like going down the mountain cruising. Like we, we both cruise as well. Um, just like that whole vibe. I just love that. So then like putting that in like a video game is like so cool. That is that. And you can cruise just like on the street kind of, or in like these specific. Um, oh yeah. So sorry. So, yeah. So like, sorry. Let me, let me break it down for you. And so, so basically you are put in this like space and it's got like all these jumps and all these yeah. tricks or not tricks. You have to do the tricks. So basically um, there's like these objectives where it's like get 10,000 points. I mean, it's like every time you do a trick, you get a point. And like, if you do a combo, like a combo is anywhere from like 1200 to 5,000 points, which I just found this out the last time I was playing, which I'm going to get into because I've been struggling to, to get past a certain point. Um, and I'll get to that. So, so basically you kind of like, there's like a list of objectives where it's like, so you have to find, you have to find the word skate. So like, there's a okay. big, like floating, like letter S and a letter K and a letter A and a letter T and a letter E. And you have to like, so you also like another thing, you, as soon as you get put into this setting, you have two minutes. It's a timer at the top. You only have two minutes to like complete this objective. And like, if you, so like normally the first time I normally just like, I like get in there and I just like fuck around and like, just check everything out and like see it. Um, and then it's like, okay, like this time I'm going to go get all the skates. I it's like this time I'm going to go get all the, like the movie clips or like, like the, the hanger for the second one. They're like the, um, the propellers on like old planes and you just have to like go and hit those and you have to get five of them. And then there's also like a quote unquote, like cryptic thing. I, I actually had to look one of them up cause I wanted to do it. Um, and I, cause I was like, I don't really know what this is. And it was basically like jump the gap or something. And you have to like, there's like one gap that or is actually in this case, I think there were two gaps. So you had to like jump, grind, jump again. And you had to like do it twice. And I was like, I never would have done that. Or I mean, like, who knows, maybe I would have done that, you know, but it's like, it doesn't really tell you exactly what the objective is. And you kind of just have to skate around and enjoy it. Yeah. And so like, after you get like, I think it's like five or so of those like things checked off, it opens up a second area and it's like called the mall. And then, so like you go into the mall and like for, so like basically like the areas have gotten like, actually, I think the second one was the school. And it's just cool because it's like, you can like, like one of the objectives is you have to like wall grind and hit like five fire alarm things. 
So that's kind of cool. Like I found a, actually, I think I, I don't think I've done that one. I think I've found like four of them or something. And I'm just like, like, cause it's so cool. Like chill, just chilling, like grinding and like jumping and doing all these tricks. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and those things that you're mentioning like the propeller and like the film, um, those, I, I remember those a lot from downhill jam and just like these little like Easter eggs almost that like you kind of can choose to play through if you want to and collect yeah. mm-hmm. um, throughout the story. I'm curious to see what the downhill jam is like on the on the game. If it's if it's very similar, I might just have to pull the trig, because that's. Yeah, I mean, like you get a lot of game for this. Like this is something that I mean, it's it's forty nine ninety nine, and that's something we talked about last week is like how expensive things are. You're essentially getting three three games, games for fifty bucks. Fifty bucks, I think, and I think if there's anyone that's gonna do stuff like that, it's skaters because they're just by nature just not about all of this. Uh, profit maximization yeah definitely it's capitalization it really it really can like take away from from a good time in, in that it aspect. definitely can it can take away from the art because i i feel yeah. like video games are art you know definitely man. when they're when they're well executed they are art and mm-hmm. and tony hawk like downhill jam just that game is a piece of art um to me because yeah it's definitely just the way like the music the the art is everything together is it's a work of art vibe, man. it really is it, it really is and it's really and like i'm gonna even take it a step further to like this you know like it's crazy that it's like this is happening like like i mean like this is not really crazy that it's happening in um like a skater tony hawk game because of like that whole culture but they're they really have a really cool message with this game and it's like it's not really it's very subtle and it's not like if you so it's not like in like a story like you don't really have it's not really a story based message but like it's kind of a a message and a vibe about how they did it so like like tony hawk and like all those guys like it's kind of like a tribute to them but then they also have like a second set of characters and it's like all young people and it's and it's really kind of like honoring them as well yeah and resonating because like, that, that's like when you mentioned that i wanted to ask you about a skater that i really like and to see if he was in the game if you recognize his name um, yeah i'll have to look there's actually a couple there's like one from brooklyn one from queens really yeah i'll have to i'll have to show you the whole character list but like the one that i'm playing as um and this is dude like honestly like this is just so rad and i love that they have this in there um so i'm playing as a skater called leo baker have you heard of them i've heard of leo baker yeah so they're like the first transgender uh like pro skater and and it's just so awesome that they have it in there and like so i'm definitely maxing out their shit right now (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's awesome and It'll they have some like really rad outfits and i like it kind of gives you like missions to where you can like unlock new outfits yeah and their outfits for the skaters are rad and yeah and so like what i'm stuck on right now is getting medals in the game so i have to get two medals as leo baker in order to unlock their outfit mm. and i cannot seem to get any of these medals so basically <laughs> what so so the way it happened like the way it progresses is i also didn't even know how to get a medal for a little bit and like because i wanted that outfit so bad i like jumped online and i think i alluded to this a little bit that i was like i think i have to win in online in order to get a medal but that that's not the case so what i actually have to do is like you know how i said like you unlock like new areas once you like get a certain number of uh like the check marks like cross off the list i guess like certain objectives like cross off the list yeah so the next area that i unlock in tony hawk pro skater one is a competition Mm. so i have to win the competition in order to unlock the next area to move on and then when i do that i also get a medal okay and that'll bring you one step closer that'll bring me yep Mm -hmm. so this is oh gosh this this might be a little bit embarrassing if anybody's like actually played um this franchise <laughs> at all so you can one thing that you can do which i i also alluded to when you when you're getting get into a new area they also have these things that you can pick up and they give you like a skill point right and then like for example like tony hawk doesn't have like the best grinding but he has like great spin and like tricks like so they okay. there's like a whole like they have like a whole stat board and like each day skater has their own like abilities and strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. yeah so i've i've been getting almost all of those and like progressively like moving up the the stats for my skaters well actually i've only really been doing it for for the my skater that i created and the and leo baker so 
I've I've just kind of been like stuck and I didn't really know where to go. And I'm like, I've pretty much like leveled them up as, as much as I can. And I'm like, how do I get these like better combos? And then like literally on the screen next to where you can upgrade their stats, you can choose different combos. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I've unlocked the ability to add like three different combos. So like they also like when you when you start out as a skater, they have like three combo or two or three combos that you can't change because like those are like their signature moves in real life. And it's like uh it's like a combo so like I have to like there's like a special bar at like the top um, right hand corner and you have to like do tricks in order to fill up that special bar yeah. and then once you fill up that special bar you can do a special trick so like with Leo Baker for example do you have to hit left down on the the left joystick you have to hit left down and B while you're in the air, in, in the air. and that'll give you 1200 points mm. but then I just unlocked well actually I don't know if it had been unlocked or I just noticed that I could add some more combos in there to where now I have like I literally have three more combos that I can use and they're all like 5,000 points wow so I was like oh my gosh like I was just messing around I didn't even know that I could like I, I was and like I also played online and I was like how are these people like getting like all these like points and combos like the highest thing that I have is like 1200 and then if I'm gonna like string it out you have to like grind or manual which is that's how you can like prolong combos um, and I was like, how are they doing that? Like, that's crazy. Uh, but then like, like, how are they getting like 10,000? They did this like 10 times in like 20 seconds. Like, how is that? But like, realistically, they probably did like one or two combos, which with like 5,000. So I, anyways, that's like a lot of like, that kind of like, I feel like I really talked about the numbers a lot there, but yeah, it's like so cool. And like, just the vibe of it is like so awesome. So I'm really excited to like, keep checking that out. Um, Cause like, it's also like really digestible. Cause like I said, it's like two minutes. So like you really just like hop in and like, you can just play for two minutes. Like if you only have time to play for 10 minutes, that's like two or three runs and then you're done. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a great thing to do. Like on my lunch, like working from home, I can just like literally like turn my Xbox on, like go make some food. And then like, by the time I eat my food, like it's all loaded up and I can just like play two or three times, you know, in these areas. And it's just so rad. You can just play for a bit before you have to get back to work. It's, it's like a really convenient kind of, it reminds me a bit of like Florence in that, in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's kind of like, and I'm, I'm, I'm really being drawn to that, like that aspect of just like being able to like play games in like a moment and then like being able to like move on with your life. Like I, I think that might be why, like one of the reasons why I like Pokemon so much is because you can just like, you can just save it and turn it off at That's any a, point. Yeah. That, that functionality. Yeah, you can do that with Breath of the Wild too, which is kind of why I've been able to like, why I think I've been into it is because like, I've I've probably played like six or seven times. I mean, you know, it's only lasted like, like 45 minutes in total gameplay, but like just me having that ability to just like save it there and then turn it off. Like, like as if it's like, I have 10 minutes to play a video game. Like, I, I mean, like I'm pretty busy, like even, even with everything, which is a huge blessing, but you know, in also some ways like video games are just like, some of them, it just takes so long to play. No, yeah, totally. And like some of them, like you see, you don't get the message or you don't get the, don't get to feel like what the, the developer is intending you to feel until the end of that. Right. And, you know, that sometimes I feel like that can take away from the art of it, but like exactly. something like this, you know, like, and I'm assuming I'm going to have the same kind of vibe with Florence. And it sounds like you have that same vibe with Florence where you're just like, oh, it's just like this in-between moment. Let me like do something a little bit deeper instead of just like scrolling on Instagram. Right or something like that. No, totally. And and I, I'm glad you mentioned that because we live in a time where most people in, in first world countries, their attention spans are, are you know, not, not there fully. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have attention spans that have been somewhat altered because of technology, because of all of these things that have come to light, you know, recently. And um, definitely is something that I've noticed on my, on my own playing video games. I've kind of lost this like sense of being able to keep my stream of focus on a game. Um, which I, I used to be so good at it, you know, it didn't matter what game it was, you know, I could sit in front of it and I'd be, you know, consumed by this world. But now I guess I'm, I'm spoiled in a way. I'm, I'm not too sure how to put my finger on it, but anytime I'll play a game, there's a very high chance that I'll get tired of it within like 25, 30 minutes of playing it, you know, consecutively. An example of that is 2K. Mm -hmm. I'll play like a match or two, and then I'm like, you know what? This just isn't this just isn't doing the trick anymore. You know, I just I gotta I gotta stop and um, just do something else. 
Yeah, I, I think it, it, it kind of, I mean, maybe this is just, just me, but I kind of feel like I kind of seems like you're saying it's like the feeling of just being underwhelmed, you know, with like your time spent in a game. And not being able to focus either because like I'll, I'll turn on a game and like I really want to play 2K. That's the reason that I turned it on in the first place. But like five, ten minutes into playing, I'm like, you know what? I'd much rather do this. And then I'm just, I lose my focus, my train of thought. And I'm like it's elsewhere and I just stop playing. I save and quit and I can go yeah. do something else. And it's like that functionality of being able to save and come back is really useful. But I kind of beat myself up when I start to overdo it. And I'm like saving and quitting like mm -hmm. too much. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I feel the same way. And I think that we kind of mentioned it in an early one too, or an earlier episode. Where it's like, we just got to chill out and play some video games. We got to, got to let her, let ourselves like, you know, enjoy the, enjoy the thing that we like to do in our free time. Right. Cause like, I don't, I mean, this might be different for you, but like for me specifically, I'm always like, oh, like I've got like things that I need to be doing. Like maybe now is not the best time to, to no, play of video course. games. I think that some of that's just like growing up, but also like some of that, I think is like, I guess like realizing our higher purpose and doing other things, which is, which is cool too. Right. Just knowing like your time is valuable and you can yeah. be using it much more wisely than other yeah. things. Definitely. Um, that's definitely something that's like a coming of age kind of, kind yeah. of thing. And maybe less, less due to all of the social media and technology stuff but i definitely do feel like that plays a role for especially the younger crowd gaming yeah. and it definitely affects the things that sell and don't sell but yeah like yeah. the games that people are are interested in people are interested in like fast paced like call of duty like let's get this match in it's really quick you know it's that dopamine pleasure as opposed to like a skyrim where you sit down and you really like enjoy the adventure yeah, it's um we're we're getting different games now and it's because of like this like people just want things fast and we want to be stimulated quickly and it's over. Yeah, there's just like and you know this is like this is a a good thing about like gaming right now. Like I think we even said this in our last episode. There's just so many games out there that we could like never play them all. Right. You know, and I'm I kind of want to bring it back to what you said about 2K because I'm wondering if it's just not like you kind of said it just wasn't doing it for you anymore. And I wonder if maybe that's like maybe you should try like try a new game or like a new kind of thing. Yeah, because like I had the same kind of feeling with with Battlefront 2 where it was like I would like specifically like turn my box on just to play Battlefront Battlefront 2 and I would just get in there and I'd start playing it I'd be like man it's just I just get pulled out of it is there like, something whether, else that you could do yeah and it, I was like I don't know if it's just like the game like I think it had to do like a lot with like the game mechanics and like I think it might have even been like the, the poor game design and it, it also mm -hmm. like to me it kind of felt like I don't think they did this for the the sake like i just got the vibe every time i got into it that i was like man i don't feel like this is like made for me to like enjoy it as much as it was as battlefront to make money mm. and Damn. i i almost wonder if like that's a good so point. if if you're feeling that same way about 2k because they're they're both made by the same developer like, yeah they're both like both 2k studios or actually no 2k is its own i keep thinking that 2k is with yeah. ea 2K I don't know why. Yeah, they're like yeah. competitors with EA. Yeah, they're yeah, they're competitors. But like I mean that's I mean that's one and of the same, you know. Like yeah. even though they're not the same, so, like they're I'm sure they poach each other's talent. Like, yeah. oh you should work at EA, like come over here, do some stuff for 2K. Yeah. And, and vice versa. And you know, it's also like worth mentioning that the other game that I didn't like recently, um, Squadrons was also EA. Mm. Man, yeah. EA, EA in general, man. And I got my eyes open to EA's business model because of Madden. I mm -hmm. also, another sport game that I really liked. I got into my ultimate team and I had this one friend. Shout out to my, to my son, Thomas. Um, Shout out to Thomas. Dude, <laughs> Thomas would spend thousands of dollars on Madden every year. And he was just so good at the game, but it wasn't because of skill. We all knew why he was so good at the game. And it just became this like really self-destructive habit of like, I started to want to compete with Thomas. I'm like, I might as well get some packs and stuff so I can, you know, keep up. It's uh, it's just a business model where it's like year in, year out, we're going to do it. And I feel like 2K is, is heading down the same, if not already in the same route. 
Um, yeah. And it, I don't know, maybe it just might be because of like the game itself. It's a sport game. And so that's the way it's been done historically every year. They will drop a game and um, just to keep up with like the roster and stuff. So maybe I just need a new a new title, man. Maybe I need to stray away from 2K as well. Yeah, I, you know, I also like worth mentioning. I'm pretty sure that, that Tony Hawk is also also an EA game. So like mm-hmm. they definitely like can do it, and they and they wouldn't be like so big if they couldn't do it. You right. Know what I mean? No, of course not. So and like they also like it made like they made some of my favorite games, but they've also like just kind of like made some that I'm like this just isn't for me, and that's okay. Yeah. Like I mean we mentioned that last time, like like some games just aren't gonna be for us. Yeah. yeah. That's okay, man. But that is okay. I'm wondering if you should check out an indie game. An indie. I, I used to like indie games on the Xbox Marketplace. I would um, check out indie games a lot because they were very inexpensive. Yeah. And um, I would play some games and they were just, I would spend more hours on indie games than I would on like a Minecraft. I remember there was this Minecraft knockoff. I think it was like Bloody Miners or something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, my friends and I would play that instead of Minecraft for hours and like days at a time just because it's just, there was something about it that the indie developer got right and we enjoyed. Definitely. That's awesome, dude. I mean, yeah, I I think it's also cool that like indie game is that like that's like a thing that it's like a genre. Yeah. And it's like it's like kind of becoming a little bit more mainstream. Definitely. Um, and it's like all like it's literally like if you go on your if you're like how would I even find these? It's on your like Xbox or PlayStation Store, you know, or it's also on the Switch Store as well. Like I just like if you like it's like a category of games. Yeah, and it's it's its own category, and I feel like it was birthed because of what we're talking about this phenomenon of developers just having all this money and being able to you know tell a story but not doing it justice because like the passion is not there the love for it is not there and and something we see happen in business you know across across many different industries but yeah dude maybe you should check out some indie games would you like have like anything and anything in mind is there like a genre that you'd want to check out or do you have like a do you have like a list of games that you're wanting to check out there are some right now, um, God of War and that Spider-Man on the, mm. on the new uh, PS5. Yeah. I'm looking forward to those heavily. I mentioned that on the past uh, podcast. Mm. Next Gen 2K, I'm horrible. I know, guys, but I'm doing it. I'm going <laughs> to check it out. I'm going to check it out, see what all the hype is about. And um, I, think, I think this might be like a, a time for me to decide, like, hey, if this next Gen 2K is not, is not any better, then we might just have to cut it here and just stop with these, this franchise. So, yeah. which I mean, yeah, that, 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 that would be disappointing, but I actually, I, I have a, a similar story about like cutting it with the franchise. Um, I, I haven't, so I bought the last um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, but I have not bought a Call of Duty game. Actually, actually, I don't think I've ever bought one when it like came out. Yeah. And I've always kind of just like played the, the last one because it's always cheaper, you know, to get yeah. the, like, like I, I kind of played that train a little bit. And I, I haven't played one since Black Ops 2. Damn. And that's a gem, too. That's a, that's a great one to, like, leave it at. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I Because I, I kind of, like, I saw, like, some gameplay of, like, Infinite Warfare. And, like, I was like, the coolest thing about this was the trailer. And then I was like, I'm not going to pick it up. Yeah, I regret that one. I'm sorry, Activision. I'm sorry, <laughs> Blizzard. But, yeah, you guys can have my 60 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and then I like I picked this past one up, and I like I mean like I think that we also like alluded to it. Um, like the gulag is a cool like game mechanic, but like yeah. I'm starting to be like yeah, that's that's a little bit kind of messed up having prisoners of war. Like, anyways, regardless, like it's fun. Like I have I've put like two or three days into that game. Yeah, and I I mean like I definitely got burnt out in the last battle pass that I bought. I was like, I don't want to finish this. Like I just don't want to do it. Like I was like, I want the stuff at the end, but I was like, I don't want to grind for it. Like I just I kind of walked away. Yeah. And I did I did buy a tracer pack though. That was cool. And I will yeah. probably I'll probably buy a tracer pack for the next next game, but I don't know if I'll buy another battle pass. Just cause like I just like being able to like, like I said, like walk in for like play for an hour or two and then leave. And I'm, I'm really enjoying that. But like, so like, it might be one of those things where, you know, you don't buy, don't buy the next one. Don't buy the next layer. Or maybe like when, t- when the time comes in two or three years, like, and you walk away from 2k, maybe other people will also be walking away from it and it might not do as well. And they'll be like, Hey, like, why didn't this do as well? And yeah. Like, oh, it's cause of all these 
predatory things, you know, that we're doing here. So maybe like we'll try and do something else, which would be cool. I hope that happens, you know, because I mean, like it kind of feed like those microtransactions kind of feed like kind of like that addictive personality. No, totally. Those microtransactions, that's what they're designed to do. And that's kind of where we're headed towards. If you look at like Apple's business model with like the Apple card and like monthly installments on iCloud and like everything is headed towards of, of like pay throughout your lifetime, pay, you know, not, not just once, but pay continually. I think yeah. that's where yeah. we're headed towards. But um, there's also not to cut you off, but there are there is like also this trend that we're seeing, which I'm really excited about. It's like the free to play games, and then it's like you just pay for the cosmetics on it, which is like the Fortnite, like the Apex Legends, yeah, um, like the games like that. Um, which have you had a chance to check out Spellbreak? Not yet, and I'm sorry about Mm. that. You didn't mention it. Mm. That was. That was the season where I was just really like caught up in midterms and stuff. Yeah, no, definitely, man. You know, if you were actually like, honestly, honestly, if you're looking for like a total change of pace, you should check out Spellbreak. It's a battle royale, but you don't have like guns. Like it's very like, it's very like in a fantasy world and you use the R, like the triggers and the button or in the bumpers. And I think you can actually get it on Switch. You can get it. I think you can get it on Switch and PlayStation and Xbox. I might just do it for Switch. And it's free to play, man. And it's, it's really, it's just, it's so chill. It's like literally so chill. And it's like a battle royale that's like free. And it just kind of like has this like, this vibe where it's like, you get in there and you can like totally just like have like a, like, cause the world's so beautiful. Like you can totally have that just like walking sim with like a, just like being in that world. And then you can also like totally fuck some people up and like with the combat. Yeah. Cause it is, it is definitely like, I like honestly like fucking somebody up and like like Call of Duty like it's cool but like we've also like we've done it a thousand times right we you got know what tired I mean? of it yeah this the can the combat in this is like so different so you have um it's like for fire for example so they're called gauntlets and basically you can pick up a gauntlet for each hand and like for fire like if you have your right trigger be fire and so you have a so you pick you pick one gauntlet to start out with and then you find another one on the ground the in the tutorial they kind of have you do fire and toxic which is like a like a toxic like it's like gas kind of so basically you just like shoot fireballs um with the trigger and you can like shoot like pools of acid with the oh, wow. toxic and then like there's the bumpers and it takes like 10 to 15 seconds to charge up and then like for fire you can like build a firewall and then for acid you can like shoot this gigantic like acid ball but then there's also like an added gameplay mechanic to where like you can also shoot a fireball at the bob like the bubble of acid and it'll blow up <laughs> So, so you can you can like play with like the materials i was gonna ask can you like light up the acid with a fire yeah you can and it's it's cool and there's also um so this is a a cool piece that they have so if you have if you start out with the ice one that they have you start off so like the ice is kind of like the sniper um like you kind of have to like it's like a bow kind of and it like shoots like an um like an icicle and that like if you hit somebody in the head like you can like one hit them but that's like so yeah. hard to do in this game um but like there are definitely people that can do it but if you have it on your your right bumper you can shoot it on the ground and then you can ice skate on it what but so it's just like the mechanics are just like all there for it yeah but if you get the the um it also kind of like plays a factor of which one you do first because if you get um the ice for your left bumper or left trigger you can't skate on it but you can like so this is cool so like if you do like uh ice and like electricity um once you shoot the ice it melts after a little bit of time and then you can like so if somebody's walking through the ice you can electrocute it and it'll turn into like like a pool of electricity Oh, I'm shocked. <laughs> that's so, sick. That's right, cool, does so. sound does sound really ch- sick. Yeah. So if you're definitely looking for a change of pace, that might be a good way to to change some pace and check out something that's like one free to play and two like a lot of fun. And I think that that's a pretty positive way to end the episode. I think well. so too, man. I think so too. It's been a really productive episode. We got to talk about Florence a bit, which we're going to talk about in the future, as well as Breath of, yep. Wild, Breath of the Wild. This is not the last time. Um, these are two titles that we're just... You should play Florence along with us because it's two ninety nine on mobile. Yeah. That'd be super, super cool. Well, I think it'd be super cool for our, our listeners to, to play that with us, and then we could play that right. as well. I'm going right. to talk about that on here. So definitely, man.
Have anything you want to say before we sign off? Just want to say thank you to everyone listening. Yeah, this is a great, great podcast. I appreciate all yeah, of you. Definitely. We're having a lot of fun making it for sure. And if you are, if you are listening, that is so awesome. So thank you. Like sincerely, sincerely, thank you for that. And you know, this, I'm really enjoying hanging out with you, Brandon. So likewise, likewise. Awesome. Well, have a great one, everybody. Bye.